Well, hi there. In this screencast, we're going to begin talking about the process of photosynthesis. And just getting done talking about another major pathway in living things, uh, in, in cell respiration, photosynthesis is really kind of the, the biochemical opposite, um, where in photosynthesis, we're going to make organic compounds from light and from compounds in the air. So these are the basic raw materials of photosynthesis. Of course, the whole process is an endergonic process where the input is the input is sunlight. Um, the amazing ability of plants to capture sunlight and build organic molecules uh, just makes photosynthesis um, a pretty cool process. You think plants aren't that exciting. It's, am it's amazing what they do on the cellular level. So we'll talk about these a lot more in more detail, but um, the, the plant needs to take up um, water and, and trace minerals in the, through the roots. Um, there's going to be gas exchange in the leaves. There's going to be an, uh, taking in of carbon dioxide from the atm atmosphere and a given and a product of, of photosynthesis being oxygen, which is released into the atmosphere. But the, the real key that sustains lives and ecosystems um, is the carbon dioxide, um, excuse me, the glucose, the big sugar, the carbon compound that is going to pass energy to the next organism in line in a food chain. We need to review a couple of terms here. Um, remember that from chapter two, early on talking about biochemistry and the physical natures of life, all energy, um, all or organisms and living things need a constant input of energy. And there's two main ways of doing that, really main ways that we focus on. There's, there's, there's um, kind of a third, but things are either heterotrophs, which is mostly the animal kingdom, including you and I, um, and there's autotrophs, things that are able to make their own molecules. And really, um, they aren't all photosynthetic autotrophs. There are some that can make some from, um, from chemicals, make energy from chemicals in the environment. But heterotroph, hetero means other, and troph means to eat or to feed. And so heterotrophs um, get their energy, their food, from other organisms. They get their organic molecules from other organisms. So they're consumers. Autotrophs literally means self-feeder or self-eater. And they produce their own energy by converting, um, here in the case of, of plants, converting sunlight energy to organic molecules, using that to energize the building of organic molecules, things that are um, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen-based really carbon molecule carbon molecules and of course the the carbon base um, originates in the carbon dioxide so if we look at how these things are related again the process is the one on the top should look very familiar to you of course that's cell respiration and the photosynthetic process this pathway is is uh, symbolized or signified by the chemical reaction that's on the bottom of the screen, where we take carbon dioxide, a product of cell respiration, with water, also a product of cellular respiration, and using light to energize this with enzymes present to produce, to produce uh, glucose and oxygen. So you can see that these are, these are um, energetically, uh, they are biochemical opposites of one another. Um, cell respiration is an exergonic process where we oxidize the glucose molecule. And it's an endergonic, of course, input of light energy, but it's an endergonic process where there's a reduction of carbon dioxide to glucose. So the question is, um, where is the ATP? Where is the ATP that's involved here in, in photo, photosynthesis? That is why all organisms, to do work, to do work, cells need cellular respiration. Um, even plants can't get it done alone just by the process of photosynthesis. 
Photosynthesis is not in the business of making ATP for cellular work. It's in the business of harnessing light energy to build organic compounds. So again, you want to review um, being able to follow the, the redox reaction in photosynthesis. On the bottom of the screen, we've got the redox reactions involved in cell respiration. And here again, you can see that they are the biochemical opposites in photosynthesis, where carbon dioxide is, uh, we have the reduction to glucose and the oxidation of water to oxygen. So if we take these and, and, and look at the needs of a plant, look at the needs of autotrophs, they need to do these items. They need to collect light energy, be able to absorb it, so that they can transfer it to chemical energy. Once again, they need to transfer this to carbon compounds that they're going to build in the leaf tissues. They need to be able to store the energy. They must be able to, um, they must be able to store it to harness it later. They need the building block atoms. This is where especially the main ones of carbon dioxide and water come into play. And of course they need to produce um, all organic molecules that are needed for growth. So all of the ones that we've talked about so far, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. We've already looked at this uh, at the beginning of the screencast that Obtaining the raw materials, um, we need to know a little bit about the plant structure in order to do that. Actually, um, the, the plant structure, morphology of a plant, which is really the anatomy of plants, is, is uh, something that's not a big um, highlight in AP Bio. But we do need to know some of it to be able to talk about how they obtain their raw materials. So they obtain the sunlight, which you probably guessed, um, through the leaves. And there's many, many, many specializations of leaves um, that, that try to utilize the best method they can in their environment for um, collecting that solar energy. Carbon dioxide is exchanged um, through what are called stomates. Stomates are typically on the underside of a leaf, and these are literally openings. I mean, a, a stomate is, a, is an opening or a hole in the underside of the leaf and that allows for carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange. Water is taken up through the roots. Um, really minimal, if any, would be taken through any of the um, other tissues of the plant, but taken up through the roots, along with um, some of your, some really key um, nutrients and minerals taken through the roots from the ground. And we won't focus too much on these, but um, nitrogen and, and phosphorus and potassium and sulfur and magnesium and iron, those are also taken through the roots. So anatomically, this is a really important um, structure in plants, the, the stomate. One stomate, or sometimes you'll see that referred to as a stoma as well. Um, the, these, are, these are the spaces, the gaps between what are called guard cells. So the guard cells are here, you can see them, they're, they're um, look brown here in this actual photo micrograph of this. But there's for gas exchange there. You can see that um, water will be lost. When a plant is going to dry, you know, dry out, it becomes dehydrated, it wilts, we say, it's because it loses water from the tissues. And uh, really it happens in the leaves of the tissue, not so much as if it leaches out of the, um, out of the root so much. But water can leave the leaf, See what I did there? Leave the leaf. Get it? Pretty funny. And it takes in, this is where carbon dioxide for the process of photosynthesis enters. Uh, the plant can also um, lose oxygen or release oxygen through those uh, stomates. So you can take a look, to, take a pause here. We won't need to know all of these layers um, here. We talked about the spongy mesophyll layer here where all the air spaces are. And that would be here as well. We talked about that in the, in the photosynthesis lab when we were doing the disc lab. Um, but you want to take a look at, at this and be comfortable with um, relating the air spaces and the guard cells and the stomata to um, the process of photosynthesis, especially with gas exchange. This process of transpiration we'll look at um, kind of the next unit. We'll look at transpiration is the water loss and water movement through 
through a plant. And we'll look more closely at that when we talk about um, the movement of substances um, into and out of cells. So here's the underside of some leaves, some uh, microscope views. You've got the, the actual stomates here, stomates plural, or one stomata, but the whole, the space is actually the, the stomate and the guard cells, um, they regulate essentially by either swelling up. If they swell up, they, they shut that gap. And if they um, kind of shrink up, they will, this gap will open. And down the line, we will also talk about how plants do that and why they do that, uh, because they do regulate the opening of those stoma. Of course, it helps regulate the gas exchange. Of course, the big player that you're probably aware about of in photosynthesis is the chloroplast. The chloroplasts are the plant cell organelles that are all about absorbing sunlight. Um, they have the uh, green, green light absorbing, um, or excuse me, the light reflecting pigment that is going to um, make plants look green, but the chloroplasts contain that pigment chlorophyll. So the, their job is to, to absorb sunlight and, of course, carbon dioxide, where all of the photosynthetic pathways take place in here, and make energy and sugar. The, this, is kind of a, this is kind of an outline of, of what you need to know about the, um, about the plant structure with the, as far as on the cellular level and the organelles called chloroplasts. Um, so you want, to, you want to take some time. You need to be able to recognize this. And it's uh, really simple. Again, my, um, my, my letters got smushed out here a little bit when I changed the format here for the screencast. But um, the thylakoids... And the grana um, stacks, these are all really the arrangements of the inside of the chloroplast. So you're going to want to, I'm not going to just go through a bunch of vocabulary here on the screencast, so make sure that you are able to define and even recognize um, these structures um, of the chloroplast. Our next step is going to be talking about the, really the, the active biochemical pathway of photosynthesis where the light energy is going to be converted to chemical energy. We'll take a close look at that. And um, this is just an overview of, of this, of photosynthesis, and really it involves two pathways. You know, remember that cell respiration basically had three big pathways, or maybe four parts, but from glycolysis to acetyl-CoA prep to the Krebs cycle to electron transport, well, photosynthesis is uh, really involving two pathways. The light reactions where we're going to convert light energy. That's going to be where the light is absorbed and then it's converted into chemical energy. And the, the carbon-fixing reactions, um, kind of traditionally called the dark reactions, but that's a little bit misleading. But this is where we're going to use, um, we're going to actually use ATP from the light reactions and our uh, NADPH, another coenzyme we'll talk about, along with the carbon dioxide that is taken into the cell to produce the carbohydrates. So in one of them, kind of the focus is energy. In the other, the focus is producing the carbohydrates. And we kind of stay tuned for next, where we'll dive into these things a little bit more. You should be familiar with really kind of the, um, the overall process after this screencast, really what the raw materials and the products are of photosynthesis and um, we will look at the pathway more closely in future screencasts.